Happy New Year. Happy 2023. Thank you for gathering with us today. Much of the service today will be the Great Thanksgiving. It's become almost a tradition, I would say, at our congregation to uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper on the first day of the year and use the Great Thanksgiving liturgy. So that's what we do. If you cannot easily read the screen from where you are, because you'll be participating a lot, please adjust your seating now so that you can see it easily. Looks like you're all confident that you can see from where you are. We celebrate the Lord's Supper. We celebrate this, the eighth day of Christmas. We celebrate the light, which is breaking in both uh, cosmically and uh, theologically today. So our first hymn together is Arise, Your Light Has Come. It is our prayer to... Uh, invite God's presence among us. There you are. Please stand. Number seven, or 273. Arise, your light is come, the spirits call obey. Rise up the glory of your God, which shines on you today. Arise, your light is come, bring by the prison door. Proclaim the captive's liberty, good tidings to the poor. Arise, your light is come, are you in sorrow poor? Find the poor broken hard ones, and comfort those who mourn. Our eyes, your light is called, the mountains burst in song. Eyes up like eagles on the wing, God's power will make us strong. Okay, Mike and Leo, could you come and help me with giving you the children's blessing? You guys are good at this. You know that? You practice more than the rest of us do. All right. So we talked about this a little bit before. What is today? Uh, New Year's. Uh, and it's also, that makes it the first day of 2023, right? And the first day of January. And it happens that today is the first day of the week, Sunday. Now, on the first Sunday of the week, uh, of the month, we celebrate communion. It's our regular thing to do. So let's take a look at the elements. This is a symbolic meal, of course. We don't eat very much. We have the bread, which represents Jesus' body, and we have the cup, which represents his life, his blood. And we call this communion, which means we're together, and we call it remembering or memorial because we remember what Jesus did for us. Another word we use is thanksgiving, and that's the thing we're emphasizing today. It's a thanksgiving meal. So as you come today, I want to encourage you, I want to ask you, think about what you're thankful for in a new year. You've got some time to think about it. Okay, can you do that? 
All right, good. Now, I know it's been a while since we've done this, and maybe not everybody's real excited about it, but if you help, I think it'll go okay. Can we say the peace of Christ be with you? The peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Can you find a couple of people as you go back to your mom and give them a little fist bump because they might not, they might be worried about germs. Just give them a little fist bump and say the peace of Christ be with you. Okay, let's do that. The peace of Christ be with you. Oh, hold it. And also with you. And also with you. All right, let's share it with other people. Please turn to number 838, the peace of the earth. The peace of the earth be with you, the peace of the heavens too. The peace of the rivers be with you, the peace of the oceans too. Deep peace falling over you, God's peace glowing in you. The peace of the earth be with you, the peace of the heavens. The peace of the rivers be with you, the peace of the oceans too. Matthew chapter 2, 13 through 23. When the Magi had departed, an angel came from the Lord, appeared to Joseph in a dream. He said, get up, quickly. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod will soon search for the child. Joseph got up and during the night took the child and his mother to Egypt. He stayed there until Herod had died. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I have called my son out of Egypt. When Herod knew the Magi had fooled him, he was angry. He sent, he sent soldiers after for the children in Bethlehem and in all the surrounding territory who were two years old and younger, according to the time that he had learned from the Magi. This fulfilled the word spoken by Jeremiah the prophet. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and much grieving. Rachel weeping for her children, and she did not want to be comforted because they were gone. After Herod died, an angel from the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, Joseph, the angel said and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. Those who were trying to kill the child are dead. Joseph got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. 
But when he heard that Herod's son, Archelaus, ruled over Judah, Joseph was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he went to the area of Galilee. He settled in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. May this word become God's word for us. Thanks be to God. As we move to prayers, I'm going to invite you to reflect for just a bit more on the text from Matthew. Liddy Barlow has written a lectionary help for Christian century and reflects further on this. She reminds us that Matthew opens with this strong word that this is the gospel of the Messiah, that is the anointed one, who is son of David and son of Abraham. And she says, this sounds like a, a very magnificent start. It looks like things ought to be uh, pleasant and majestic from this moment forward. And then we have the genealogy with four women mentioned, all of them bringing some level of diversity, insight, grace that's unexpected to the story. And then we have the name of Rachel added in this lectionary, Rachel being uh, the favored wife of Jacob. The person who lives a sad life, but as Lady Barlow points out, throughout the book of Genesis, she's not allowed to shed a tear. Uh, she has trouble with her sister. She has trouble bearing children. She dies young in birth with Benjamin as her child. She calls him a child of sorrow, but the name is uh, changed by Jacob. And then Jeremiah the prophet mentions her and says that Ram, uh, she's weeping in Rama. But then immediately follows that with the word from God, refrain from weeping, God says to her. There's hope in your future as the exiles are being carried away. She is told to stop weeping. And then in this text in, Jer uh, in Matthew, Matthew does not include that refrain, stop weeping. When the children are, mar are martyred, murdered by Herod, she continues to weep. And it's her weeping that instructs and informs us as we move to prayer. She helps us call to mind all those children who have lost their lives or who have their lives threatened. From Ukraine to Ethiopia to Cuba to Haiti to our neighborhoods, to the schools to the various places where death threatens. So that informs us as we move to our prayer time. Now you're invited to text 977-8076 um, if you'd like to add uh, your prayer. And we'll begin with the formal prayer that is part of our liturgy, and then we'll move to uh, a prompted prayer. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you will respond. When I say, in your mercy, you'll say, Lord, hear our prayer. Shall we, shall we pray? Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. To have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Forgiven and pardoned, we greet each other with the word of peace. Let the peace of the Lord be with you always. And we continue now in our prayers. Lord, with the tears of Rachel guiding us, we begin our prayers by thinking of the needs closest to us. And we pray for Lily and Marvin as they enjoy good days together. Lord, in your great mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Joe Brewster, who is healing from an, an illness or a, an accident that he experienced. We ask for healing, strength, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a friend's son who is struggling with mental health issues and ask that you will bring deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Gary Barber, who faces surgery on Thursday. We pray that he will be cleared of cancer, that you will guide physicians, that you will comfort him and his family as they prepare. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember Reagan, granddaughter of Olivia, and ask that you will continue to bring healing and health and life to her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we turn beyond our immediate circle to pray for the needs of our world. We have another another uh, concern that's come in. Let me let me uh, remind us of that. We pray for a friend Jackie, who has just been diagnosed with COVID, and we ask that she will find healing. God in Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray also for Elaine Buckham as she travels today to join a, a peace conference organized by the Mennonite Church. And we ask that you'll protect her as she travels and that she will be a blessing and be blessed through that experience together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we pray for those needs for which Rachel weeps for people around the world, unknown to us, but known to you. And we include among the places that we name, though there are many others that we are also aware, Ukraine, Cuba, where the Church of the Brethren is active, Haiti, also in our hemisphere, People suffering in Myanmar, the Uyghurs, in China. And Lord, you will hear as we either silently allow or allowed mention other places, both in our own country and beyond, in need of your healing touch and your word of justice.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we now turn from this moment of bringing our petitions to you to give you thanks for this day, for the beauty of rain, for the gathering of the saints in this place, for the opportunity to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. May we experience the great joy of being uh, people of your peace. Amen. Please stand and turn to number 797. We are people of God's peace. We are people of God's peace, son for creation. Love you and light and strengthens us at this celebration. Sons and daughters of the Lord, serving one another, a new covenant and the peace brings us all together. We are heralds of God's peace for God's creation. And by grace, love, with our peace, we chase every nation. Though we falter and we fail, Christ will still renew us by the Holy Spirit's love. He's working through us. We are children of God's peace, this for creation. Spreading joy and happiness, God's great salvation. Our bring its spirit meek in our daily living. Peace with everyone we seek, for people giving. We are servants of God's peace, of creation. Choosing peace, we wait with love, evil hearts revolution. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, confidence will give us. Christ the God is our defense, Christ will never believe us. Please be seated. Prayer for yearning, for of yearning. I will recount the Lord's faithful acts. I will sing the Lord's praises because of all the Lord had did for us, for God's great favor toward the house of Israel. God treated them compassionately and with deep affection. God said, truly, they are my people, children who won't do what is wrong. God became their savior. During all their distress, God also was distressed. So a messenger who served him saved them. In love and mercy, God redeemed them, lifting and carrying them throughout earlier times. May we find God's wisdom in these words. Amen. The 
the prophet reminds us that God has redeemed and God has saved, God has delivered. What a fine way for us to move together to the Lord's table. Now I invite you to join with me as we follow this litany. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The risen Christ is with us. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? We believe in his blood, God's Holy Spirit. Our Lord has received human grace, learned of his divinity, suffered in human form, and is just like the Father in heaven. When we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, he has accepted us to heaven, he has seen the right heart. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, which we hear the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the life everlasting. We join now to sing, Let the Hungry Come to Me, Invitation to the Table. Four fifty nine. Let the hungry come to me, let the poor be fed. Let the thirsty come to drink. Share my wine and bread. Though you have me, come to me and eat. Drink the cup I offer. Feed on finest wheat. I myself am living bread. Feed on me and live. In this cup, my blood for you, drink the wine I give. All who eat for thee, all who drink my blood, shall have joy forever. Share the life of God. Let's move to the preparation. Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe. You are the giver of this bread, fruit of the earth, and of human labor. Let it become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe. You are the giver of this cup, fruit of the vine, and of human labor. Let it become the cup of the eternal kingdom. As the grain once scattered in fields and the grapes once dispersed in the hillside are reunited on this table in bread and cup, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Maranatha. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through your living word you created all things and pronounced them good. You made human beings in your own image to share your life and reflect your glory. When the time had fully come, you gave Christ to us as the way, the truth, and the life. He accepted baptism and consecration as your servant to announce the good news to the poor. At the Last Supper, Christ bequeathed to us the Thanksgiving meal, that we should celebrate the memorial of the cross and resurrection and receive his presence as food. To all the redeemed, Christ gave the royal priesthood and in loving his brothers and sisters, chooses those who share in the ministry that they may feed the church with your word, enable it to live by your sacraments. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O God, Lord of the universe, you are holy and your glory is beyond measure. Upon this, the Lord's table, send the life giving spirit who spoke by Moses and the prophets who overshadowed the Virgin Mary with grace, who descended upon Jesus in the River Jordan and upon the apostles on the day of Pentecost. May the outpouring of this spirit of fire bless this Thanksgiving meal, that this bread and cup may become for us the living bread and cup, the body, blood of Christ by which we are fed. Come, Creator Spirit. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the, new, the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, you do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his birth and life among us, his baptism by John, his last meal with the apostles, his death and resurrection, we proclaim Christ's resurrection and ascension in glory, where, as our great high priest, he ever intercedes for all people. And we look for his coming at the last. United in Christ's priesthood, we present to you this memorial. Remember the sacrifice of your son and grant to people everywhere the benefits of Christ's redemptive work. Behold, Lord, this Lord's Supper, which you yourself gave to the church, behold it and graciously receive it as you accept the offering of your son whereby we are reinstated in your covenant as we partake of this lord's supper fill us with the holy spirit that we may be one single body and one single spirit in christ a living sacrifice to the praise of your glory 
Sanctify these gifts by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son. The holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this, the Lord's Supper, and that we may serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ taught us, we pray. Friends in Christ, the Lord has prepared this table. All who seek God, who are drawn to Christ, who are committed to discipleship and fellowship are welcome at this God's table. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Here among you shall I dwell, making all things new. You shall be my very own, I, your God, with you. Blessed are you, invited to my wedding feast. You shall live forever, all your joys increase. Hail, O word incarnate, born from Mary's womb. Hail, O strength immortal, risen from the tomb. Share with us your victory, Savior ever blessed. Live more fully in our hearts, be our constant guest. Now with glad thanksgiving, praise Christ glorified. He in us is present, we in him abide. Members of his body, we in him are one. Hail the sacred union, heaven on earth begun. the gifts of God for the people of God. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup of blessing for which we give thanks is the communion in the blood of Christ. This morning, we invite you to come forward 
Arthur will take a piece of the bread, pronounce the words, the body of Christ broken for you. In the interest of minimizing contamination, he will be the one who dips it into the cup, place it on this plate, and that will be yours to partake immediately. And then you may return to your seat. So come forward, receive the bread in the plate, and then return.
in peace let us pray to the Lord. O Lord our God, we give you thanks for uniting us by baptism in the body of Christ and for filling us with joy in this celebration of the Lord's Supper. Lead us toward the visible unity of your church and help us to treasure all the signs of reconciliation that you have granted us. Now that we have tasted of the banquet you have prepared for us in the world to come, we anticipate the day we will share together the inheritance of the saints in the life of your heavenly city. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. As we go into the world, let us be prepared by the love of God in Christ to serve our neighbors. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I pray the work is to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on the journey, we are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other, walk on the land of the road. I will hold the Christ light for you, in the lifetime of your fear, I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh or laugh with you. I will share the joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to our God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. God, oh, we've gone together. Of Christ's love and agony. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ for you. Pray that I may have a grace to let you be my servant too. In some ways, it feels a bit foreign for us to use those words of the great thanksgiving. As a church that confesses that Jesus is the center of our faith, community is the center of our life, and peacemaking is the center of our mission, uh, these words from Menno Simons inform the way in which we live out this call to be servants. And so I invite you to turn Rather than following what we have on the screen, let's turn to 921, which allows all of us to participate together in these words of Simon's. Arthur, I'm going to ask you to lead part two over here. If you'll come stand with me and I'll lead part one. That's us on this side. Uh, and notice that we'll begin in unison and then we'll speak to each other these words from Meadow Simon's. So can we stand to read this text? 
Together we read, True evangelical faith cannot lie dormant. It spins itself out in all kinds of righteousness and fruits of love. It destroys all forbidden lusts and desires. It clothes the naked. It comforts the sorrowful. It aids and consoles the sad. It serves those who harm it. It teaches, admonishes, and judges us with the word of God. It binds up what is wounded. It saves what is strong. The persecution, suffering, and anguish that come to it for the sake of the truth of Christ have become a glorious joy and comfort to it. Well, I've got to welcome you in serving communion, but let me welcome you from here as well and just tell you a few things happening in the life of the congregation. Um, this morning, after the service, if you're here in person, there'll be a fellowship time in the fellowship hall um, with refreshments. So I encourage you to um, take a chance to visit with people and catch up with one another and have conversations. Um, there won't be any second hour programming this morning. So those of you who are on Zoom, carry on talking as long as you would like this morning. Um, I do ask that if you're here in person, um, just sometime after the service, we need to take down a painting that's in the lobby. So if, if just a few people can help with that, it will take just a minute um, for Jeff. So if we could do that this morning as well. I wanted to say thank you um, for the many people who gave throughout the year and who also gave at, um, kind of a year end as we made a special appeal to um, get donations in to finish the year well. Um, I don't have a final total for you this morning, because we just had the 31st here yesterday. But um, I think by Wednesday, we'll be able to let everyone know kind of how we finish the year and Resource Ministries will update us on that. But thank you very much, particularly to those who kind of gave extra here at the end to help us um, finish the year well. Just a few really quick announcements. One is that um, the office will be closed tomorrow, closed tomorrow, taking the holiday for today. Um, and then it will be open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week. I do encourage you to take the opportunity to check in with people as best you're able this week. I'm aware of a number of people that are sick, um, people that are in hospital, um, people that are grieving this time of year. So um, let's, because we will all be where we are all at outside of here, I encourage you wherever you are to check in with someone um, and encourage them this week as best you're able. And then next Sunday, I want to remind you that we'll have our uh, will it be Epiphany Sunday? So we'll celebrate Epiphany um, next Sunday. And also we'll celebrate officially being welcomed to the Pacific Southwest Mennonite Conference. And we'll have Stanley Green here with us next Sunday, as well as a number of other visitors. Um, please do feel free to invite others to join with us for that celebration um, that morning. It's obviously a significant moment in the life of our congregation, as well as a number of us in pastoral ministry. So um, as many of you will know, Pastor Audrey will be officially licensed. She is officially licensed, but it will be the ceremony of officially licensed. So we're glad to be able to celebrate with her and the joining in that. Lynn is having his um, credentials reinstated with the Mennonite Church of USA. And so we're excited and happy to be able to part of that with you, Lynn. Um, and I'm having my credentials recognized within the Mennonite Church USA. So that will be part of the ceremony as well as us as a congregation formally joining with them and celebrating with them. So do come and do invite others. It will be a great morning. Um, so I encourage you to come. And I think that's it for me. So I want to ask you to stand and Joe will come up for our final song. And it's number 
812 sent forth by God's blessing. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confess. The people of God from this journey take leave. The supper is ended, on the be extended. The fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of Christ chief receptive souls preaching shall the song in direction for God and for all. Your grace did invite us, your love shall unite us to work for your pain and to answer your call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the tasks of our everyday life we will face. Our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing the children of each tribe and race. With your feast of us, with your life will lead us, unite us as one in the life that we share. Then may all our living with praise and thanksgiving give honor to his name that we bear.